Hello. In this video, I'm going to discuss how you can use uh, FEM simulation, so finite element method simulation, to analyze how an everyday product like this spanner will break. And uh, you can download the model in SolidWorks format from the link that you see over here. And I've analyzed the part with SolidWorks simulation. So this is the content of this video. First, I'm going to show the SolidWorks simulation. How, uh, how I calculated the spanner, then I'm going to improve the calculation because a normal FEM analysis you always start first with a, a root uh, calculation and then start refining it. And then at the end I want to see how the way we analyze the product will be able to predict the way of failing of the real life product. So what I've done first is uh, look with Google for Google images as you can see here I've looked for broken spanners and here you can see some so we're going to analyze if we could have predicted this with help of finite element method. And first I searched for what material a spanner is generally made of. So I found this website after searching for it. And this website says spanners are in general made of this material, which is a very rude way. Of course, it would be better to inform myself better with the producers of spanners to see which material they use. but. For now, the most important thing of this video is predicting the way of failure of spanners. So I'm going to go with this material. And as I said, if it was a more professional analysis, I would have first uh, had to make sure which material would be used in the real product. So then I searched uh, a little bit further for the material that was mentioned on the previous website. And I found that the yield strength, the yield strength of the material is 620 megapascal. It's tool steel. So in general, steel for tools is better than uh, steels that are used in structures because tools have more forces, more stresses that sh they should be able to withstand. So this is the yield strength, it's uh, the most important piece of information that I found then on the materials and I've entered that in the, the model. So let's switch over to SolidWorks. Here. here I've got my spanner and if you downloaded it from GrabCAD you'll find that it will have two configurations. So this one is the default one and then I can switch to the FEM analysis so finite element method analysis and I've uh, created a configuration without the text because you shouldn't actually calculate this text because it will cause a lot of extra elements which will be which will cause your uh, analysis to be a lot slower and it will have not valuable information containing the stresses in these letters that you don't really need so that's why it's convenient to work with two configurations and I've deleted all the fine detail that doesn't really matter for the FEM analysis. So I'm gonna switch to the part and then see here that I've got four, uh, four FEM analyses created in this part. So the first one is a very rude attempt, very inaccurate attempt, as, as I said here. First you wanna see what's going on inside the spanner, see what's what and if it's easy to mesh it. So that's the first analysis. So that's, uh, it's not good because the boundary conditions here are not correct. I've fixed everything on this surface over here, fixed all these surfaces that you see over here. And that's not the way a real life spanner will work because the spanner can slide over the, the bolt. Uh, but for a first analysis, okay, you see now the stresses are high over here. They're actually I put a, a force of 100 kilo, so a thousand Newton, roughly 100 kilo standing on the spanner. And here you see in the model which material I used. I created my own material with the information that I found on the website. Here you see the yield strength is 620 Newton per square millimeter. Uh, the elastic modulus and the Poisson's ratio are uh, very similar for all steels, but the yield strength is a big difference and the tensile stress as well, the tensile strength. So this is the, the value that I cr used from the website and I entered in my material. So you'll find that as well if you download it from, from GrabCAD, this model. So that's uh, that's the material. And then I'm going to go to the study. I applied a force of a thousand kilo, oh sorry, a thousand Newton. So a hundred. A uh, thousand newtons, so roughly a hundred kilos, standing on this spanner, which is quite a, a big force, of course. And then you see that uh, in this case, the yield strength is exceeded here in the red area. You can see it here because of the red arrow that indicates the the yield stress. So I can assume then, because there's stresses over uh, the the red arrow, 
that this part will fail over here in this case. And I've, as we've seen on the website, that doesn't really happen. So this is a, a very inaccurate first attempt. Then I improved my fixtures. So I've created a fixture over here and used reference geometry over here. So the, the spanner can now slide. So it's not fixed in all three directions against movements anymore, but it can slide over a knot, for example. And then I apply the same force and then I'm going to look at the stresses. So this is already an improved simulation and it indicates that now the higher stress is over here because this can slide now. You can see it when I, oh, this went wrong. I wanted to create an animation. This, this is not what I want to do. I want to animate the result with this. And then you can see now this spanner can slide over here. So you, you see the boundary condition very well when you create this animation. It's exaggerated now with a factor of three. That's important, this deformation scale. So this uh, movement is exaggerated with a factor of three, but you can see the, the spanner can now slide on this boundary condition, which is a lot better. But it's not exactly what's happening in real life. So it's, uh, it's much better than the first simulation, but it's not good enough yet. And as we can see over here, I created a, an extra plot. You do that with the right mouse button, define stress plot. So I created an extra plot, a vector plot of principal stresses. And now we can see that the, the largest principal stress occurs over here, which can be expected when you look at the force. And the knot will actually be stopping the spanner over here. So this force over this arm will have a large effect over here in the stress. So th it's most the the moment of this force over this arm that will cause a lot of tensile stress over here. And now if we look back at the way the spanners actually broke, you can see here this one broke on the other side. So what we can conclude is the spanner broke when it was untightening a bolt that was very uh, very much rusted to another product for example. So it, it was very hard to remove it and then probably they put a lot of force in it and this spanner broke over there. So uh, I can see here it's not the, the right position. So this is when tightening a bolt and probably the, the spanners broke when untightening a bolt and then they broke over here. So I'm gonna uh, go to another simulation that I've already previously set up because it will take too long to run for a video if I hadn't already set it up previously. So then I'm gonna go to the, the stress plot I now created an unscrewing simulation with fixtures. So here I fixed it, here I used reference geometry and now you can see this is not a very accurate simulation as well. Because now these surfaces are not allowed to move anymore, which is also not good. The, the best way of analyzing this is actually drawing a knot and then using the SolidWorks contact that's called uh, no penetration contact, which will mean that the the spanner and the bolt can actually come into contact and slide over each other. But I know it's a very expensive contact. Uh, it means it costs a lot of calculation time and your calculation will run for hours or days when you do that. So uh, I'm trying to prevent that. So that's why I created this last simulation. That's uh, the most valuable in my case. I actually put forces on the spanner to create a moment to balance this moment over here. So. I calculated the forces that I had to apply over here. I estimated the angle the forces would work on. Then I entered the forces uh, to uh, be able to uh, balance the moment over, over here. So I've already created an Excel file of that as well. And I created a sketch in the part. So when I go here to the sketch, you can see that the moment of 100 over the horizontal distance, so 100 Newton over this arm, will have to be balanced by a force uh, that is running over this arm over here. So I've created an Excel file of that. This is the 100 kilograms, so 1000 Newton over this arm will have to be balanced by a force over this arm, which is this arm over here, uh, which I've entered in the sketch, which will align with the forces as I've uh, used them in the final simulation. So then I know these forces should be over 8,000 Newton, 8,173. And if I then go back to SolidWorks again, I've entered 
this force in this calculation. Uh, as previously said, it could be better to do a no penetration contact and then actually drawing the knot, but then I know that that contact will cost a lot of time and will, long, will take a long time to run, whereas these simulations, all four of them, run roughly on my computer for about a minute, so not that, uh, not that long. And then I've created one fixture over here for the, the small forces that aren't balanced with these forces. So they should cause a very minor stress concentration. If I look at the results in the von Mises stress, and you can see it's a neglectable stress concentration over here. So I've done my forces quite well, good enough for this simulation. And now I can see that the maximum von Mises stress is happening over there and a less a large stress is happening over there. So now, I, now you can see what we expected, that the force is higher, the highest over here. And now if we want to know how this, uh, this product broke, it would be good to draw the maximum principal stress. I've created a plot over here for that. And if, if you look at the, the other videos that I've created on my YouTube channel, you'll see that the largest tensile stress will cause uh, a shear stress under an angle of 45 degrees and that's how a product will break. So dislocations will start running. I've created a couple of videos on that. So let's go back to the presentation. Here you can see the stress results that I've uh, already put in this presentation. And you can see here the Mises stress shows that the product will probably fail over there, but it doesn't indicate how the product will fail. So that's why you need this uh, principal stress plot. You know that the, the maximum shear will happen under an angle of 45 degrees relative to the maximum first principal stress. So that's this angle or this angle. So that is probably how this product will break. And in the last sheet of this presentation, you'll see that the first three images uh, also correspond to that way of failure. So they, they correspond to the expected way of failure roughly. So using this uh, principal stress, you can actually estimate or predict how a product will break. And as you can see, the, the other pictures, they involve not actually correct way of using a spanner. So that's, uh, that should be ignored for the simulation that we're discussing over here. Probably they've used uh, the spanner over here as a, a way of putting a moment on a, on a product and uh, the way a spanner is not supposed to be to be used uh, as in it's it wasn't used in this case to actually undo a nut probably so that's uh, the way you can use SOLIDWORKS simulation to predict failure of a product and what i wanted to show is yeah you when you're doing a fem analysis you start for with a very rough first attempt to see if the mesh works then you're going to improve the fixtures until you actually get results that are reliable and these fixtures should always be uh, corresponding to real life situations. So that's the most important when doing a FEM analysis to apply the fixtures in the way that they would be applied in real life as well. So that, that was what I wanted to show in this video. Thanks for watching.